This is Federal List 79, Part 2. We are going to start with, let me count this, sorry. Paragraph 3. But before I go there, yesterday, uh, when I was reading Federal List 70, when I read Federal List 78, I showed you a few books that uh, I recommend you, when you have time and interest, after you've read the Federalist Papers once or twice, uh, to take a look at these books because it'll give you a much more in-depth understanding of the Federalists. Uh, I've found it helpful, not that I agree with everything they say, but it's important to take a look at them. Like one of them was this one. It's called The Political Theory of the Federalist. Uh, I showed it to you in that video by David Epstein. Uh, here's another one. This is a collection of essays. And it's called Saving the Revolution. It's edited by Charles Kessler. The Federalist Papers and the American Founding. Like there's like two or three articles in this regarding the judiciary, regarding you know, many different articles def uh, regarding different branches of uh, the federal government. So it gives you a more in-depth understanding. It. And then, of course, I showed you a few other books. Uh, uh, don't forget, uh, one of the most important things you can do during the reading of the Federalist Papers, while you're reading it, in between, afterwards, look at... Uh, uh, the lectures of some of the authors that over the course of past couple of months uh, I have shown you. Um, I have not included any of these, many of these videos in the play playlist. I've just given you the name of those professors um, and uh, it would really, really help you understand uh, Mar American history much better. Um, let me go ahead and read this for you. This provision for the support of the judges bears every mark of prudence and efficacy. And it may be safely affirmed that together with the permanent tenure of their offices, it affords a better prospect of their independence than is discoverable in the constitutions of any of the states in regard to their own judges. So the constitution that you are looking at to ratify the federal constitution uh, has looked at this thing, has written provisions regarding the judiciary that's much better than uh, what has been written in different constitutions of different states. And the precautions for their responsibility are comprised in the article respecting impeachment. They are liable to be impeached for malconduct by the House of Representatives and tried by the Senate. We've talked about this impeachment process. The House impeaches, but then it goes to the Senate to get a final verdict, to find a person guilty or not guilty. Then the process is finished. and if convicted may be dismissed from office and disqualified for holding any other office. This is the only provision on the point which is consistent with the necessary independence of the judicial character and is the only one which we find in our own constitution in respect to our own judges. In our own constitution, he means the Constitution of New York. Because remember, he is uh, primarily writing for the New York audience. The want of a provision for removing the judges on account of inability has been a subject of complaint. But all considerate men will be sensible that such a provision would either not be practiced on, upon or would be more liable to abuse than calculated to answer any good purpose. The mensuration of the faculties of the mind has, I believe, no place in the catalog of known arts. It says, 
There's no catalog anywhere that exactly says when somebody is going to lose their mind or their faculty. They're not going to be all there. Well, I lost my place here. Okay, excuse me. An attempt to fix the boundary between the regions of ability and inability would much oftener give scope to personal and party attachments and enmities than advance the interests of justice or the public good. The result, except in the case of insanity, must for the most part be arbitrary. And insanity and insanity without any formal or express provision may be safely pronounced to be a virtual disqualification. The Constitution of New York, to avoid investigations that must forever be vague and dangerous, has taken a particular age as the criterion of inability. No man can be a judge beyond 60. This is what the state of New York says. I believe there are few at present who do not disapprove of this provision. There is no station in relation to which it is less proper than to that of a judge. The deliberating and comparing faculties generally preserve their strength much beyond that period in men who survive it. And when in addition to this circumstance, we consider how few there are who outlive the season of intellectual vigor and how improbable it is that any considerable proportions of the bench, proportion of the bench, whether more or less numerous, should be in such a situation at the same time. We shall be ready to conclude that limitations of this sort have little to recommend to them. Recommend them. In a republic where fortunes are not affluent and pensions not expedient, the dismission of men from stations in which they have served their country long and usefully, on which they depend for subsistence, and from which it will be too late to resort to any other occupation for a livelihood, ought to have some better apology to humanity than is to be found in the imaginary danger of a superannuated bench. Superannuated bench, I believe he's saying a bench, a court which is, uh, which includes many, many, many real old people, superannuated. Uh, so another point that he mentions here is that, well, you can't, you can't say somebody's going to lose their faculty when they're at age 60, like the state of New York does. He says, we haven't seen anywhere that have categorized it, that have totally shown to us that that happens. And what happens is that for somebody who's been sitting on the bench as a judge and has learned quite a bit about the laws of foreign countries, uh, as well as, of course, the laws of the country that he's serving in, uh, then all of a sudden, do you want to do away with all that experience just because a person's age says they're 60, 61, 62? And another thing is, uh, if you disqualify them from the job they've been doing for so long, at a certain age, they're not going to be finding another job. This is not like a British system where a lot of people that might become judges, they're already wealthy, super wealthy. So uh, it says in a Republican system, uh, the person that has served for a long time uh, might not be able to find uh, another job uh, to, uh, to make enough money to make ends meet. We know that is not the case right now, but this is, they are talking about 200 some years ago. So um, keep, keep those in mind. And uh, actually this is a very uh, interesting subject for you to, th to think about. Do you think judges should serve 
uh, during good behavior till they decide to retire? Uh, or do you think maybe 10 years, 20 years, 18 years is uh, long enough for them to serve? Uh, just think about it and uh, we'll, we'll uh, continue here in a little bit. Well, I think we're done here. We'll see you during the reading of Federalist 80.